in the hustle and bustle of our daily life, is that too difficult for us to stop and take a break? Are we afraid that if we stop, the other persons will surpass us and we will lose? Then we run all the time, never allow ourselves to rest, truly rest. Actually, the world nowadays is operating with lots of craving for fame, power, money, social status. It's like a play that we are characters in it, but we identify ourselves with those characters and we cannot get out of that. We imprison ourselves in those cycles of fame, power, money. This has caused many mental illnesses such as depression. Perhaps that's why they call an entrepreneur a businessman. Then I would like to be a businesswoman. We do a lot of things and I think sometimes it's helpful to do nothing. Let me show you why I think it's really important for me to organize my life in a way that I have time to rest amid the hustle of the world around me. My approach will have four stages. Stopping and calming my body and my mind, letting go, resting and healing. Firstly, I need to stop and to calm my body and my mind. It's the art of stopping and calming that I need to learn and practice again and again. It's about not being carried away by my messy thinking process, by my habit energies, or by strong emotions. Sometimes I thought and behave in a way that I would regret later. I might vow that I would not do that again, but I did. Why did that happen? Because my habit energies are stored deeply in my subconsciousness. And when conditions stimulate, I just react in a happy show way and I am not fully aware of my speech and my action. So how can I behave in a calmer way? I practice living mindfully in the present moment. It's the practice of bringing awareness to my body, my mind, and the surrounding that I interact with in the here and now. I can practice mindfulness not only when sitting in meditation, but anywhere and anytime. When I breathe, or when I walk, or when I lie down, or when I speak, or when I cook, and so on. I talk about mindfulness all the time and it's pretty simple but for me it's easier said than done. The more mindfulness shines on everything we do, the less darkness or forgetfulness appears in our action. I remember vividly the first time I realized the benefits of stopping and calming. At that time, I worked with a customer to audit her accounting books. Normally, she was really nice and took care of my team. But one day, when I discussed with her some audit findings, she lost her temper and criticized me. Luckily, I stopped talking and came back to my breathing. Breathing in, I calmed my body and mind. Breathing out, I released the tension in my body and mind. Suddenly, I realized her pressure and her stress. Then I felt compassionate for her. This realization refrained me from talking or arguing as my habits. I came back to my desk and decided to talk to her later with encouraging words when she calmed down. At that time, I didn't know anything about meditation. But the miracle of some breath was the first condition leading me to the path of self-discovery and self-awareness. Secondly, in order to truly rest, I need to let go. What do I need to let go of? Any attitudes created by the elusive ego, including attachment to pleasure, resistance to difficulties, or wanting to be calm. I mean to let go completely, even the resistance to the current situation of the world. Because social change is only the outcome of the change in the consciousness of everybody. So we may only be able to sow the good seeds to the world, and that is only one condition. 
It needs many other conditions for the world to be better, including people's awakening. So I need to be okay with the situation of the world as it is in the present moment. But I don't underestimate the benefits of showing good seeds. Let me share with you the journal that I wrote a few years ago when I practiced letting go and felt so relieved. Today I go to an event to listen to a Dharma talk and to practice meditation, including my full eating. For the first time, I feel really happy to be living with the miraculous and beautiful reality around me. Sitting and eating in silence, there is a lovely garden, there are fallen leaves, there are many green plants, there are many friends sitting and eating in mindfulness with me as well. There are delicious vegan dishes. I am chewing food, chewing slowly. Perhaps it's not slow enough to enjoy fully the whole taste of the food, but I just fully accept my current level. I just enjoy the food I have now. Unlike other days, I had lunch at work, but I didn't really eat my food. I always ate my projects or I thought I had to say something to my college. Now I am grateful for the volunteers who helped organize such events. There are so many lovely people in life, there's not only fighting and competition. Looking around, I can see the kindness of everyone, of the volunteers, of the friends sitting beside me, of the security guy who said to me, go home happily. Life is so beautiful to me now. Seeing someone who is a bit sad, with a wrinkled face like a dry banana, I do not judge or assume anymore, just feel empathetic for her pain. And perhaps she is on her healing journey. It's so great. Being grateful for the miraculous present, just sitting quietly in mindfulness, watching the clouds, watching the blue sky can make me happy. When I felt this, I shed a few tears. I realized happiness is not too far away, not in the achievements, work, or the admiration that I once grasped. True happiness is very simple, in the here and now. I realized recently I have not taken good care of my body and mind at all. I only force myself to eat a project, to eat a plan, to eat a lot of pressure and stress. I need to love myself, to let my body sit down, sitting still and breathe relaxingly. I am living completely, peacefully in the present moment. The past is over, the future has not yet come. There is only the miraculous reality at the moment. Thirdly, stopping, calming, and letting go are preconditions for me to rest completely. Sometimes I force my body to work a lot, even if scream with headache or insomnia, but I didn't stop until I had a severe stress. Resting is a necessary demand of the body after it's worked so hard. A few weeks ago, I had a chance to go hiking when I could completely rest. The sky was a bit great in the morning on that day, and I told my husband, this gloomy sky makes me too lazy to climb. How forgetful I was on that day. Perhaps that's reflected my mind after a busy working week. But when we just entered the road leading to the meditation center, two lights of green trees seemed to greet us with their freshness and liveliness. We had some time to enjoy the stillness and peace of the meditation center, then we started hiking. The sky became brighter and the sun sighed. It was totally opposite to what we predicted. When we started walking, I remembered a beautiful passage I read a long time ago by Zen Master Nhuk Han. I read it in Vietnamese and I'm translating here in English. I quote, Imagine a path up the mountain in a spiral shape, and the climber walks very leisurely, without the impression that he is climbing, forgetting that he is climbing. 
the road has fragrant flowers and strained grass. When I look down, I realize I have climbed to the top of the mountain. Similarly, when going down, I follow the spiral path down the mountain. End quote. When I read this the first time, I was so impressed by the equanimity of the climber. Every time I had a chance to hike, I remember vividly that relaxing, easy and leisure state of mind, and I reminded myself to be at ease like that. Actually, I still have the habit energy of running into the future, and an exhausting exercise like hiking can urge me to go faster. But bearing this relaxing behavior in mind, I could enjoy fully the journey up to the mountain. I didn't need to run anymore, just be at ease and enjoy the nature around. We even didn't know the direction, but there's a lot of marks using pieces of the monk's robes which led us to the right way. This reminded me to be mindful of every step. I didn't expect to reach the top soon. I was just present with my step and the surroundings. And when we reached the top of the mountain, the scenery was breathtaking. At that time, there was no thoughts coming through my head. No more work, no more hurry, no more projects. Only this present moment. It was so relaxing and I just enjoyed the view. Last but not least, calming and letting go allow me to rest and resting is a precondition for healing. It's the process that the body and the mind are healing by themselves. We just let it happen naturally. It's a miracle. Just recently, I had a crazy problem that made me so irritated. I thought I could not bear this situation anymore. At that night, I told myself that I need to rest, I need to sleep. But the ego keeps forcing me to stay awake and to figure out solutions. I had a severe head edge. After the ego and some wise voices had fighted against each other for a while, I realized I need to accept reality just as it is, no matter how bad the situation might look like. I surrendered the ego. Then I could fall asleep. Having a good sleep clarified my mind. The next morning, I felt so fresh and at ease. My headache and tiredness went away. An insight came, telling me that the ignorable behavior of that person is not too terrible. It's not the end of the world as I thought the night before. So I think that my body and my mind deserve those kinds of stopping, calming, letting go, resting, and healing. And I need to carefully listen to my body and my mind and find the balance between working and resting. That's all I want to share with you guys today. Thank you for watching. We will see you soon.